I love shooting live music, and it just so happens that Bill is a drummer in a rock and roll band. So we're here um, doing a gig. Uh, it's, a, it's a Sunday afternoon, and uh, my band is actually doing a benefit for uh, the local police department. So this is a great opportunity for Eric to do some live uh, music shooting. Yeah, I've done it before a few times. It's a lot of fun. It's very different than shooting in a large venue, shooting a big band, where you're down in the pit and just kind of looking up at the at the uh, band. It's totally different because you can really kind of move around, get to the side, get behind the band, and get all kinds of different angles. It's a lot of fun to play with. So Eric has access to the stage, behind the stage, so he can actually move around and take some really cool shots. And as the drummer in this band, when I, anytime I'm playing and there's a photographer in the audience, um, I try to connect with them because I know those are going to be good images for them. You know, and as a photographer, I know that. So if you're ever shooting live music, try to make a connection with one of the band members. You know, like try to nod at them or something, and they'll pose for you or give you a good shot because. Uh, you know, that's what we're doing up there. We're playing, we're performing, and it's it's actually fun. You know, to, to yeah, pretend I, I up could, there. I could always tell as a photographer who's you know who's locked onto me, who's watching what's going on. So it's fun to interact with the you know with the band members also that way. Uh, so there's a lot of you know figuring things out on the fly. Every venue is completely different. When I come out to a place like this, I don't really know what to expect. I don't know what the lighting is going to be like. I don't know how high the stage is going to be. But equipment-wise, it's, it's usually always pretty similar. I'm shooting mostly. With uh, I have the 15 to 35 on here now, the new RF 15 to 35. It's image stabilized, which is great. And I also have an 85 millimeter 1.4, which is image stabilized. And I have the long lens, the 300 2.8, which is also image stabilized. I can get kind of way far back and shoot the band from far away, get a different perspective that way. The reason the image stabilization is great is because I want to shoot with slow shutter speeds. I want to shoot somewhere maybe 1 30th of a second or so, 1 60th of a second at the most, because you know the, while the band is in motion, you really want to try to capture a little bit of that motion. And a slow shutter speed like 1 30th, you'll be able to freeze the performer, but you know the guitarist, you'll kind of be able to get his hand moving. The drummer, you'll get the sticks moving. And I'm going to be shooting in manual. So I'm going to be shooting basically whatever shutter speed I have and whatever aperture I want to shoot, which is going to be probably 2.8. My shutter speed, I'm going to vary it between 1 30th and 1 60th of a second because the lighting isn't going to change. The lighting is going to remain pretty much constant the whole time. And as I'm moving around and as the band is moving around, you know, sometimes they're backlit, there's light shooting out, and I don't want that to interrupt. I don't want that to mess with my exposure. I want my exposure to be the same. So if the light from behind is blowing out the scene, it's going to look cool. You know, if it's going yeah. through smoke or mist, it, it always looks cool. And as the lighting is changing, I want my exposure to be basically the same. I'm exposing for the members of the band. I want to be able to see them regardless of what kind of crazy lights are going on behind them. So, uh, you know, in a couple hours we're going to actually play and, um, you know, Eric's going to go through the motions. Are you going to, like, jump in and make any Yeah, I'm going to try to. It's going to be loud. I'm going to be loud. That's the whole I thing. Can. You know, that's something else I, uh, of my equipment that I really need. Very important. Earplugs. Absolutely. i got to make sure you have earplugs because sometimes I'm literally inches from one of the amplifiers when I'm trying to get the right shot and, you know, it's rattling my head and, you know, to save my hearing just a little bit, uh, earplugs are a must. I always wear them when I play. I mean, I'm, I'm, I think I'm half deaf now from playing the drums all these years and it's just one of those things it's a, like a occupational hazard that you know you have to deal with sometimes but um, it should be a fun night it's for a great cause so um, it's always fun when we have these kind of nights and I'm sure Eric will drop in some of the pictures yeah. from past nights where you know he's right up on stage and you know it, it's a lot of fun getting these kind of shots so this is a this is a fun photography night yeah so I'll shoot some video while I'm going through also show you what I'm doing and afterwards when I'm done going through the pictures and I have kind of like you know, a conclusion of how things went you know what work what didn't work I'll let you know how it went also okay all right All right, now that my ears have stopped ringing and I've had time to go through the pictures, I can tell you about how it went. And it was a lot of fun. It's always fun shooting live music, being a part of everything that's going on, and being able to create an environment where you're basically, your subjects are people who are also creating something. So it's a lot of fun interacting with them and being able to shoot in that environment. That being said, you never know really what environment you're going into. You can plan ahead as much as you want as far as what lenses you're gonna bring, uh, what your setting should be and everything, but Really, a huge part of shooting live music is the stage situation. Now, in a big venue, a concert venue, 
you know, it's all basically the same. You have, you know, your photographer's pit in the front. Maybe you can get access to some, you know, places off to the side of the stage a little bit. But in a small venue like this, a bar, a small concert hall, you know, it really comes down to, you know, what the setup is like. So some places that I've shot in have been a lot smaller. The band was a lot closer together. And I'm able to kind of get around into, you know, all kinds of crazy areas, get behind the band, you know, get really up close to them. They're not raised as high as they are. This place happened to be a much bigger venue. The stage was higher. Uh, it was probably about four feet high. Uh, the stage was much wider, much larger and deeper. So the band was kind of separated. So there's a lot of, you know, empty space that you have to deal with there also. And then the, the bigger part of it is the lighting elements. You know, you really never know what the lighting is gonna be like when you go in. You can plan ahead a little bit. I bring my own lights, I'll tell you about that in a minute, but you really never know what it's gonna be like. The lighting situations that I've been in, in the past, you know, some have been as simple as, you know, basically there's like an acoustic ceiling on the top of the fluorescent light and that's, that's your lighting. It's like shooting in someone's kitchen. Uh, other places have had spotlights and there's smoke coming through and it really looks cool and everything. Uh, this was really kind of a, a flat light uh, that I was dealing with. It would be great if I was shooting portraits in this light. It was really nice for that. But for shooting something like rock and roll music or a concert, you really want something more gritty and more, you know, different. Different color lights. You want backlit. You want, you know, things reflecting off of things. You want different colors. You want all of that stuff involved also. This really didn't have that there. Basically, it was kind of a white light. Uh, in the front for the guitarist and the singer, and Bill in the back was col colored in kind of a, a pink hue the whole time. Uh, and then in the back, behind Bill, on the back of the stage, there's this huge LED panel, which I was hoping would have something going on, you know, lighting up flashing lights or something, colorful things going by to kind of mix it up a little bit. And they basically just had their logo plastered on this giant LED screen the whole time. So I tried to shoot around that a little bit. I couldn't really get that to add anything to the picture. So... Uh, normally what I'll do in a lot of these situations is I'll bring my own lights. Uh, I have two or three uh, flashes, you know, on-camera flashes that I have that are radio controlled. It's the Canon 600 RT series, and these are radio controlled flashes. So what I can use is I'll bring my flashes, I'll bring two or three of these, set it up with that little stand that comes with it that you never use, but you know, all of a sudden you have a reason to use it and you can't find it. Uh, I, I'll sit it on this, or if there's no place to sit it down comfortably, I have gaffer tape with me, I'll tape it to a pole or just tape it to the wall or something. Some place where it's out of the way, it's not gonna get knocked over. And then to kind of enhance the, the look and everything, I'll put a, a gel filter over it. You, know, you can get gel filters at any camera shop. You can cut them into whatever shapes you want, different colors, different strengths and stuff. So I'll put a blue over one and a red over another or a yellow over another green maybe, just to kind of mix the lights up. If it's a long enough show, I'll change lights in between. This, I really didn't have a chance to, I even set these things up uh, before the show. It was a long show, it was a benefit. There was two bands, Bill's band was going on second, so there was only a couple minutes between bands while everything was changing over on the stage and getting reset and everything. It was really only a couple of minutes to change over and I really didn't have time to set up the lights where I wanted them and you know, get the, the measurements and everything and get them exactly the way I worked out. So I did it without the lights. It still looked good. I still had fun doing it. It just didn't have that, you know, creative, you know, aspect to it that I like using. I'm showing you some pictures here as I go along with some other shots that I took using these lights in the past. And you can see, you know, these colored lights, you know, a nice green flash kind of blows everything out or a nice backlight gives the subject like a nice halo around them. Uh, you know, things like that just kind of you know, enhance this, the picture a little bit and give it a little bit more of a, uh, you know, a grittiness, even though it's, you know, there's some fun colors there. Uh, you know, in a stage, in a setting like that, you want to see, you know, different things like that and not just a flat white light. So I still had fun doing it, like I said, but you want to be able to set something up like that. So these things, uh, these Canon RT flashes are really great. I was using the, uh, the other flashes in the past that had uh, an infrared sensor on them. Uh, which was pretty good, except for you really needed a, a line of sight. You needed your camera to be able to see the flash in order for it to fire. With the radio controlled flashes, you can fire from anywhere. So there's a little radio trigger that goes into your uh, hot shoe mount on top of the camera, and you can use this thing basically to control all the flashes that you have set up. It's radio controlled, you can shoot through a brick wall, you can shoot you know, around the corner, it doesn't matter, these flashes are still gonna fire. And you can control everything from the top of this. So you can turn it on, you can change the intensity of 
each flash individually. You can change how they fire. This, you know, it's great to have a setup like this. If you're ever gonna be shooting in an environment where you want a little bit of control over the light, you wanna be able to change things a little bit, and to be able to control lights in a broader area, a radio control system like this uh, is really great. I use it often, but in this situation, I really didn't get to set it up, uh, so I kind of, you know, did my did the best I could without it. Still came out really cool. Uh, you know, like I said before the video, I was going to be uh, shooting at slower shutter speeds, like one thirtieth of a second, one sixtieth of a second, which is what I did. And you can kind of see the motion in a lot of these pictures. You know, whether it's the drumsticks or the guitars, guitarist's hand, uh, a little bit of motion. Uh, really, you know, adds a lot because there's, there's motion going on. Uh, there's a lot going on on the stage, a lot of activity, and you want to kind of capture that in your pictures. Using the image stabilization in these lenses, the 15 to 35, the 85 millimeter, uh, was great because I was able to freeze the rest of the image at a slow shutter speed, not have any camera shake, uh, but just really capture the motion that was happening on stage. So all in all, a great experience. I look forward to going out and doing it again soon. If you have any questions, or comments or anything, put them in the description below. If you have any ideas, things that you do when you shoot live music that you wanna share, definitely put them down there. Any questions you have, if you're gonna go out and start shooting live music and you have any questions for me, definitely put them down in the comments also. We'd love to hear from you. But one last piece of advice, if you're going out to shoot live music, enjoy yourself. Go talk to people, You know, mix, mix with the band, have some stuff to eat and drink, just have a good time, because it really adds to your images in the end. You know, if you're having fun along with the band, along with the people who are watching the band and enjoying themselves, it's gonna show in your pictures. If everybody's having fun together, that's really what shines through is, you know, the, the big experience that everybody's having as part of this. So go, have a good time, enjoy yourself. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.